Rational zeros of a polynomial. Uh, first of all, let's discuss what rational numbers are. Without getting into a lot of theory here or mathematical notation or anything, basically rational numbers are fractions of whole numbers and whole numbers themselves. So three halves is a rational number, three is a rational number, okay? They do not have any square roots, so the square root of three is not a rational number. So let's let's go back and make a list. Three halves is rational, it's a fraction of whole numbers. Three is rational, it's a whole number itself. The square root of three is not rational. Similarly, something even more complex like two square roots of three over five is not a rational number because it has a square root. Um, the complex number i, that's the square root of negative one, so that's not a rational number. Any complex number, like 2 plus i, that's a complex number because it has i, that is also not a rational number. So rational numbers are whole numbers and fractions of whole numbers. Now what, what do we know about rational zeros of a polynomial? We have something called the rational zeros theorem. The rational zeros theorem gives us a list of rational numbers that might be zeros for a given polynomial. Uh, this is, could be useful for many th different things such as graphing a polynomial, factoring a polynomial, lots of different things. We won't get into the uses necessarily here, but it helps us maybe determine a zero if we can't find a zero using standard methods, if we don't recognize any zeros. It gives us things to try. Okay, So let's get into how to do this. So here we have a polynomial with four terms, and we want to list every possible rational zero. So the rational zeros theorem gives us a list. So I'll just write this out, possible rational zeros. From the rational zeros theorem. Okay, I'm not writing the theorem because it gets confusing if you write it in general for, um, you know, unless you're a mathematician. So I'm going to write it as an example here so you can see what happens. The rational zeros theorem takes the numbers, uses numbers that are involved in the polynomial. In particular, it uses the constant term. The constant term is the term does, that does not have an x. And it uses the leading coefficient. That's the coefficient in front of the biggest power of x. So in this case, x cubed is the biggest power. So the leading coefficient is 3. Then what it does is, on the top, you're so each of these is going to be like a fraction. Each rational zero is going to be something like a fraction. That's what rational means. So possible numerators are going to be factors of the constant 2. So you always take the constant factors and put them in the numerator. Then the denominators will be factors of the leading coefficient. So in this case, 3. Okay. So the factors of 2 are 1 or 2. So those are your possible numerators. The factors of 3 are 1 and 3. Make sure to list all of them. If you had 6, you would use 1, 2, 3, and 6, for example. And then we have to consider that these could be positive or negative. So we'll just say plus or minus any of these. Now let's make our list. List of possible rational zeros. Okay, So this looks confusing. What does this mean? Well, 1 could be our numerator, so I could pair that with one of these denominators. So what I'm going to do is one possibility is 1 over 1, which is 1. I could also have 1 over 3. That's another possibility. Then I could have 2 on top with 1 on bottom. That gives me 2. Or I could have 2 on top with 3 on bottom. So those are our possibilities, and don't forget to consider plus or minus all of these. So there's actually eight possible rational zeros, the positive and negative version of each of these. So how can you check? There are not eight rational zeros here. At most, this polynomial has three rational zeros because that's the highest power of x. So clearly not all of these are zeros. Maybe none of them are. Uh, this may have zeros that are not rational. Um, further theory says that that's impossible, but for now, we don't know that theory. But for now, one of these eight 
might be a zero. So how can we check them? Well, there's a couple ways. I already know, because I created this problem, that negative two-thirds is one of the zeros. So let's see how you can check that. One way is, plug it in for x. Sorry. So lots of calculators allow you to type this entire expression just like this. And if you get zero, then that means negative two-thirds is a zero in this case. Because when you plug it in, you get zero. So that's a zero. So we found that negative two-thirds is a zero. Another way is to do synthetic division with negative two-thirds out in the front. So if we do that, we, we're going to put a three, a five, a five, and a two here, and then go through the synthetic division. And if we get a zero for the remainder, then this is a zero. Okay? So let's go through that real quick. So I've run through the synthetic division. We get a remainder of zero. That means negative two-thirds is a zero. So choose whatever you like. It sort of depends on your calculator. If you have a calculator that can do this first one, that's what I recommend. Because once you type this in, if you want to check multiple things, you can just go back and edit your previous entry, meaning change the number that you plug in. You could change each of these to negative one-third very easily by changing all these twos to a one. Okay, but you just search, you check all of these until you find a zero, and then you use it for whatever application you're, you're using. Maybe factoring, maybe graphing, etc.